Okay, this is going to be all about human settlements. People choose to live in certain areas because of just the human features of an area and the physical features. The geography of an area and the human geography of an area are very influential in people's choice and where they want to live at. We're going to examine just the human features right now. Uh, population density is one thing that people consider when they're going to live in an area. And population density is the number of people who live in a square mile or kilometer. Let me give you a little visual here. Let's say we have three square kilometers in three different places in the world. Okay, this one has people living all over the place. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, this one still has fair amount of people. Okay, and this one has two. All right, so we have two people living in this square kilometer or mile, a bunch of people living in this square mile, and a whole ton of people just kind of smashed into this square mile. Here is density, a high density area, a medium density area, and a low density area. All right, well, that sounds great, but what does that mean in real life? Okay, you have very dense areas like Tokyo, Japan. They have subway pushers to smash people onto their subways. Very different way of living. We have moderately dense areas where, you know, it's a small town. There are enough people to, to have some social events and things, maybe rush hour. And then you have almost no people living here, a very low population dense area. All right, now land use. Land use is important in examining human settlements because you're examining how most people are making a living. This is an example of a city. When you have a very well-developed city with these big tall buildings and all that and these apartment complexes, most of this area is being used for business and trade. Now, business and trade supports a very high population density because the land, we're just trying to pack as many people, as many businesses into one area as we can. Uh, agriculture. Agriculture is basically farming and ranching. Farming, of course, requires a whole lot of land to grow crops. Ranching requires a whole lot of land to feed animals with. Both of these areas are going to have low population areas, uh, densities, because not too many people need to work on all this land. The more people are, there are, the more problems there would be. Also forestry. Where there are forests, you can have forestry as an industry. That's a way to use the land, uh, being there to cut down trees, basically. All right, now trade routes. Trade routes ha are very influential in the settlement of people because people choose to live where they can make money. This is big when we're talking about those areas that are based on business and trade. Speaking of business and trade, let's look at China's 10 largest cities. China's real big right now in the world and we can see most of China's largest cities are along the coast. Okay, now let's examine why that might be so. Take a look at this world map of shipping routes. Overseas shipping routes are crazy right along China's coast. Look at all this. This is wild over here. Okay, it's just about as wild as between Europe and North America. Now, people are living there because they want access to all these goods and services flowing out and in to China. Of course, mainly out for Chinese case. All right, let's also look at something else. Highways. The United States has plenty of highways. Highways are trade routes too. People choose to live along interstates because of the fact that they're well connected to other places. You don't want to live way out in the country, way over, over here, because it's inconvenient. There's not a lot of stuff. Living right there would also be very inconvenient. Do you think there are a lot of people living there? Oh heck no. No, there aren't that many people. They live mainly along these trade routes because you can get access to stores or whatever, Walmart's even. All right, enough of that. National defense is uh, the weird one. 
uh, national defense affects human settlements because nations decide to have military bases to control and defend territory that otherwise isn't all that valuable. So you have people being moved to little islands like this and resources being brought here just because it's, it has a strategic location. And you also have people moving from one country to another. The United States puts people all over the world for the sake of national and uh, international alliances here, um, and just national defense. So um, that's that basically uh, sums up national defense. All right, next up is physical features.